A very popular question has been the probability of a Dogecoin short squeeze. So we're going to get into that in this video and cover the ins and outs and see where we're positioned at right now. So when it comes down to a short, short squeeze, this is assuming you already know what a, a short is and how they work. If not, um, I have some other videos on that and I'm going to make an updated one here soon. But assuming you know how a short squeeze works, uh, what this happens is people take a negative position on an asset. And what this does is it creates a sell order automatically. So when you take out a short, you are promising to buy back that asset at a later date, hopefully at a lower number than where you took out the short so that you can collect the spread, right? That's what you would call winning in your short position. However, if the asset continues to go up, you go negative in your short position and you may end up in a situation where you have to buy back that asset because it, all shorts must be returned. You may have to purchase that asset at a greater number than what you anticipated. And so now you, and if, in this situation, kind of like with the asset continues to go up, like if let me change the chart here to, uh, this is Doge shorts, but we're going to take a look at Doge price action. With the if the asset continues to go up, you're going to be competing on the open market to purchase that asset, and this is what's known as a squeeze because the pro the there's not that's what happens when you uh, squeeze the amount of available shares or coins on the market because you're trying to cover your position to get out, and you're also competing with retail who's currently buying the asset as well. And that puts a strain on the supply and then you start getting parabolic uh, price action in the charts. So right now, most of the Dogecoin shorts are somewhere between uh, 9 to 6 and about 12 cents. So this right here, all of these green candles, these big candles, that's a problem. That's a big problem for short. So they are looking for a break to try and get this to go the other way. Um, anything, I'd say anything above um, 20 cent and is, is putting them over 100% negative. They're going to have to close out those positions. So um, another thing that kind of plays in a factor is how much uh, or how many shorts are in the position, obviously. But this is just covering pretty much how it works and competing on the overall market. Now, they do have an advantage because of Dogecoin's mine rate, which means that there's about about 14 million coins that go into the market in a day. But at these price at this price point, it's not out of people's range and it's not putting them in an uncomfortable position. So let's say, for example, if Doge was a dollar or a dollar fifty, then you would say, okay, well now it needs fourteen million dollars a day in order to suck up that um, extra liquidity that's coming onto the market. That would be a little bit more difficult. But at eighteen, excuse me, at sixteen, fifteen cent, that's not an issue for most people. Most people can take twenty bucks, fifty bucks, uh, and throw it at Doge, and and uh, and, and do that uh, cumulatively that's going to take a lot of the coins off of the market. And that's going to be an issue because now you have enough people investing in Doge um, and sending the price up, which is out producing uh, the current mine rate. And so this is why we're seeing the con con continued uh, green candles here. And what you're going to have to say is if you're short is where am I going to buy to get out of this position? Because if you're, if you, took a short and you're somewhere down here, no one wants to be 100% negative in their short, right? Um, that, that's just, at that point, it's just mindless. Uh, depending on where they took it out at, you know, there's, you run you run the chance of getting liquidated or being forced to close. And now you're being forced to buy inside of the, at a much higher rate than what you would have initially wanted. And again, that just contributes to increased price action. So how that will work as far as for a candlestick, just to kind of give you an idea. So you would have a, let's say, let's do it like this. Let's go over here. So let's say this is your candlestick. So right now the price is going up organically, right? And that's because um, retail is out, is out buying the sellers and they're out buying the current block rate, right? So let's say the shorts are saying, okay, well, we're 100% or they get forced to close 
uh, liquidity issues or they just want to get out and say, okay, we'll attack this later when the momentum slows down. But now they, all those shorts are promises, they're IOUs, they're guaranteed buys at a later date. So now instead of buying when the asset is red, they're also buying. So now you see the candlestick start to go up because the shorts are buying and the uh, retails are buying. But what you see here, as the candlestick continues to go up, then what happens? FOMO starts to kick in. Now people are saying, oh my God, I'm not going to be able to get it now. It's about to run. This is it. They start buying and then it continues to start going up. So now you have this really big overshoot where everyone's piling into the asset and they're, and they're buying for different reasons, but it's all contributing to the same thing, which is price increase, right? So, and, and this is kind of like one of the things where uh, typically if you've been following things like GameStop or AMC, this is one of the fun things about AMC is because once the, once it starts going, there's so much overshoot. There's no telling of as far as where the top is or how high it can go because you have people piling into the asset and they're all buying for different reasons. So that's pretty much how a, uh, a short squeeze would work in this situation. So right now, um, I believe let's take a look here at Doge shorts. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, just leave a comment and I'll um, clear it up. But that should make sense if I uh, if I did a good job explaining it. So right now they're still holding those positions and they're taking little bits of increases here, but you're not seeing anything like this here where they're trying to get out. Because typically speaking, they get in and they get out relatively quickly. They take their big position like this and they try and get an opportunity to um, you know, spook the price, get some sell off, and then they, they jump out quickly because when they don't want to be in that situation, which I just described, because that puts them in a position where they're going to have to buy something, you know, 100% over. So this is what they're looking for. They're fishing, they're waiting, they're increasing slightly, trying to continue that, uh, that negative pressure, those immediate sales into the market, but they're fishing and they're waiting for that break in momentum. And what they do is when there's a break in momentum, they... Um, pile in those uh, immediate sell orders and try and cause a panic in the same way that 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 uh, example I did going up what would happen I'll show you here on another example so you have the mine rate <clears throat> pushing down you have the panic sellers selling that also pushes down and then you have shorts who are now covering um, these assets and they're buying, but they are not holders of these assets. They have no intentions of holding these assets. So even when they do buy to return these assets, if they do have any, they're going to sell them immediately onto the market. So they're, even if they say, okay, well, I bought this asset here. It is, that's an immediate dump. It's just literally like a swap, right? So, um, that's that immediate dying, pre uh, immediate sell pressure that I was talking about earlier. So, that kind of happens. And then you have the um, some of the long term holders who they still believe in the asset. But because it's tanking so much, they panic as well and say, oh, well, I better take profit. And then they start selling. And then you see the opposite effect of what we were talking about earlier. And you start seeing the, the uh, this kind of this panic sell here. And you're like, you're wondering what's happening. Like, Oh, my God, it's, we were doing so great. And now there's this big red candle. You know, it's a lot going on in there. And now on the flip side of what I said earlier, now a bunch of people are selling for different reasons, right? So when you have that, um, it, it just kind of explains both sides of uh, the short sales. But when you have that type of momentum, it's hard to tell where it ends up as far as the grab liquidity, because now it's not necessarily about liquidity because you have so much uh, negative pressure on the asset. There's no telling where it's going to grab liquidity from. Same thing on the positive side. There's You can't say it's going to be a ceiling here because there's too many factors playing into the reasons why people are buying. So there's no telling how high it's going to go. It's literally like a, a yin and a yang, right? So it's uh, it's on both sides of, um, of, of the asset. So when you're uh, talking about shorts, that is the kind of... I'll say a, a general idea of how it works and how it will play into price action um, for Doge. But uh, as of right now, um, I say that we're not 
in a position right now, like I say, where we have to be threatening like a short squeeze, at least a major one, right? Now, when we get back to some of these levels up here, then this is um, where we start uh, have the potential here with some big short squeezes here. Some something that's going to dire uh, directly affect the uh, amount of coins that's on the market. This is going to like these coins here. These are the ones. These are the squeezes here that can add um, some uh, some serious money to the capital, uh, at least the market cap of the coin. So, but that's for a later date. As of right now, um, we can have a minor one. I believe we got a short squeeze alert for February. It's because of the amount that was taken out um, around the nine cent range. But um, I believe as of right now, um, there's not enough in there to cause a significant short squeeze, but they can come in in that scenario, as far as I was saying, as far as for them buying and pushing the, um, the asset up so they can get out, that can certainly take place. But it, it wouldn't be like a, I don't want to say like a noticeable, because any short squeeze counts as a short squeeze. I can't redefine it, but um, you would probably move it maybe like a few cents or so, but it wouldn't be like a 16 to, you know, 80 cents, something like that. Not at the levels that we're at now, it, but how I explained it, that's how it works. And, you know, obviously with more shorts, if they get caught with their pants down, then that's, uh, that's how you get some of those higher numbers and it can push it to some of those bigger numbers. Uh, but as of right now, that's not where we're at, but um, that's how it works. Uh, I know this was a, frequently requested video. So I hope that makes sense. Let me know in the comments if it did. Um, if it didn't, then I'll, I'll try and clear it up and address your um, concerns. If you like videos like this, that includes the TA, explains how uh, the markets work, how to break it down, how I uh, broke it down. I hope that makes sense. Um, if you like videos like this and with TA and you liked how I broke it down, please consider subscribing to the channel. Um, I do this all the time. We love talking about charts and how markets work, getting the fundamentals and TA. So um, if you found value in that, I certainly welcome you to subscribe. Um, with that being said, uh, leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts and I will see you guys in the next video.